So what I had left off in the last video, we had we had kind of talked about the scenario where my buddies and I we came up with this idea to sell socks online. We went to a rich investor, we call an angel investor, who's usually kind of a a a rich uncle type of figure who gets excited by young guys innovating in the world. And we say, hey, we need five million dollars. He says, sure enough, I think the idea you have by itself, or maybe some kind of prototype you might have made or something, that's worth five million dollars. So I'll give you another $5 million of cash to kind of get started, rent some space, hire some people. And for that, since what you had was $5 million, that's what you're bringing to the table, I'm bringing $5 million cash to the table, I essentially get half the company. And the way that works is it's not like we gave, we each gave him half of our shares. Instead, since we are the board of the company, we issue another million shares. So we double the share count and we give it to him. And this pre-money valuation is really, really important because if we if we had agreed if we said this wasn't 5 million if we said that this is i don't know let's say if we if you know he is a hard negotiator he says no that's only worth a million dollars right and i'm going to give 5 million dollars right so let me ask you how many shares would we have to issue so think about it he's if he was a hard negotiator let me draw it down here so i don't want to mess up the issue if he cuz our idea i mean it really is a hard thing to estimate what an idea is worth. So if he negotiates hard, and the end of the day, we're desperate. Financial markets have collapsed, so we'll take money from whoever's willing to give it to us, and we really want to quit our jobs. So he says that's, that, that what we have right now, our idea, is only worth a million dollars. right? And he's going to give us $5 million. So how many shares do we have to give him? This right here, this is a million shares. Right? That's what we started off with. So when he says that what we have right now is worth a million dollars, he's essentially saying that it's worth a dollar per share. A dollar per share. So my 200,000 shares are worth $200,000, according to his valuation. Up here, we said that what we had before was worth $5 million in the previous video. Right? If what we had before was worth $5 million and there were a million shares initially, right? this was the million shares, then the pre-money valuation, or actually it's the valuation either pre or post money, would be five dollars per share, five dollars per share. And in the five dollar per share world, what we did is was we we issued another million shares and sold them for five million dollars, or we sell them for five dollars per share, right, to get the five million dollars. And so we ended up with a fifty-fifty split of the company, right? This is the angel investor, angel, and this is all of us down here. And this is a, all of this is equity. No, no debt, no liabilities just yet. Now in this reality, if he's valuing what we have right now at essentially one dollar per share, he says it's worth a million dollars, you have a million shares, it's one dollar per share. In order for him to give five million dollars, he's essentially going to buy five million dollars worth of stock at one dollar per share. So he's essentially going to need five million shares. 5 million shares. And notice, in the situation up here, before when I have when I have 200,000 shares, well, when I had 1 fifth of a million of 5 million dollars, that was 5 million. When I had 1 fifth of 5 million dollars, the value of my shares was 1 million dollars, right? And then when I have 10 when I have 1 tenth of 2 million shares, I all, I still have 1 tenth of $10 million of total asset value, because now he threw in this, his $5 million. And so my share is still worth $1 million. I have, a, I have a tenth of $10 million as opposed to a fifth of $5 million. In this situation, I used to have a fifth of, two, of $1 million, which would be $200,000. And now I have 200000 over how many total shares are there now? There are now 6 million shares, right? So now I have 1 60th, right? Is that right? I have 200,000. I now have 200,000 over 6, 6 million, right? That's 6,000 thousands. That cancels out. I now own 1 30th of the company, right? Before I had 1 fifth. And we're valuing it at 6 million, right? Because I have a million here and 5 million here, times 6 million. And so. What's one thirtieth of six million? One six over thirty is equal to one 
fifth of a million. So this is still two hundred thousand dollars. So no matter what I do, my the between the pre money and the post money valuation, my per share value doesn't change any. And I want to show you that, but this matters a lot, right? Because based on what this pre money valuation is, it tells us how many how many shares, what percentage of the company our angel investor gets for investing his five million dollars. In this case, he gets five sixths of the company. Five say what is that? Five times that's like eighty percent of the company. I think roughly. And we are left with the other no, one sixth is right. One sixth no, it's more than eighty, it's like eighty four percent. And we're left with like sixteen percent of the company. So it's a very different scenario depending on what our pre money valuation is. And of course the pre money valuation is just you just take the pre money valuation plus the amount of cash they're given, and that's the post money valuation, right? The amount of money you've get you know, pre pre money and then post money, you add the money in and that's you get the six million dollar valuation. Fair enough. I think I've 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 beaten this horse dead now. I think you have a good sense of it. And let's say let's say that we we end up lucky. The guy wasn't a hard negotiator and we ended up with that first that first situation. So let me redraw it. So now if we if I were to draw the assets of this corporation, the assets of this corporation, at least at the time of that guy's investment, were it's a very intangible asset. We call it the idea. It now has a value, five million dollars, and we have some cash. We have five million in cash. Five million in cash, and then if we do the shares, so let me do that in another box. Oh, there you go. There are the shares, and of that share, we have two million shares outstanding. Two million shares. I have one million to the angel investor. Angel, so he has 50% of the shares. And just because I like to keep track of my slice, there's 200,000 shares that go to Sal. Fair enough. Now, I mean, obviously, the whole point of this wasn't just to negotiate and raise money and quit our jobs. The whole point of this was to start a business. So let's say we take this $5 million, we start hiring people, and really our first step is to build out our website and just kind of have a, a working site going. So let's say we we burn through $4 million of that and we build a site. So let's say we only have a million dollars left. We're, this is you know maybe six months in the future. We all quit our jobs. We got some fancy loft-like office space. We got a foosball table. And we also built a website. We hired some graphic designers and things. And so we've burned through most of our cash. And we're starting to get a little bit worried because we haven't made a profit yet. But we have a neat website. We have a neat website, right? Something that you know, when we went to the angel investors, we just had a we just had an idea, a business plan, and we just had you know, we just hopefully we had our charisma and we were able to sell the guy on the idea. He thought it was you know we're going to be the next um, the next dominant sock player in the world. But now we actually built something. We took his money and, as promised, we built a nice website. And now we need to raise mon- more money. One because We've hired 50 people, and this million dollars isn't going to last us too long, and that would be a shame to to run out of cash just when we're getting off the ground. We now actually have a real website and offices and all of that, and we want to raise some money because we want to we want to put up some AdWords on Google so people know about our site. We want to spend you know a couple of million dollars for a Super Bowl ad so people know that they can get socks online now. So we have to raise more money, and now at this stage. We would go back to the venture capital community, but we wouldn't go to the angels. The angels are the guys who like the big picture, who who want you know just to kind of throw some money into an early idea, and they, it's usually a, a relatively small amount. Actually, five million dollars would be a large amount for an angel. We want to go to kind of real professional VCs now, and what we would do is we would go to a seed VC. So seed VCs are kind of the the first. Round and each round is kind of every time you have to go back to the till to raise money. That's kind of a round of financing, but seed investors. So there's a lot of words for it, but seed investors are are usually VC investors who are actual professionals at what they do. They're actually managing other people's money, and we'll do another video on how they raise that money. And it's very related to how private equity firms and and hedge funds also raise their money. But they they're usually managing other people's money while while a Angel investors usually, you know, he's just sitting on top of a, a big pile of money and likes to play with it. 
So they're managing other people's money, and they tend to, you know, have some fancy MBAs that they just hired who will make models and do projections and and negotiate a little bit harder with you when you're when you're actually trying to get a value on your business. But we have to go to these guys now, and they have some value. I mean, they'll connect us with other dudes, and um, they'll they'll you know they have experience starting businesses. They can introduce us to other people who've who've done similar things, and and all the rest help us network and help us manage the business. So we go to a venture capitalist, and we get the door closed a lot of times on us. But one venture capitalist, one seed venture capitalist, finally comes to us. And the, the, the terminology can be a little ambiguous here, but we'll call it our Series A financing. Series A. Sometimes it'll be called your seed financing, but we'll call it Series A because we want to formalize it. And just so you know, the A is because it's our first real formal round of financing. In our second round, which I'll do probably in the next video, it'll be Series B, and then Series C, and then Series D. Every time we run out of cash, we want to go back to the till. We've already done a Series A. Now we want to do a Series B, and a Series C, and so forth and so on. And eventually, we'll hopefully get to some type of an IPO, which I'll talk about in the next video, because I just realized I'm out of time again.